A warm welcome to our celebration of Holy Communion, even though we are at home. Let's pray. Eternal Spirit of the living God, be for us the fountain of water, creating and sustaining each day. Be for us the enlivening wind, searching us out and scouring us clean. Be for us the refining, warming flame, steadying and transforming our desires that lovingly and truthfully we may pray and we may live. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Our first hymn is Love Divine. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father's forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect for today, the third Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble and those who know your name put their trust in you for you O Lord have not forsaken those who seek you sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion declare his deeds among the peoples for he who avenges blood is mindful of them he does not forget the cry of the afflicted be gracious to me O Lord See what I suffer from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death, so that I may recount all your praises, and, in the gates of daughter Zion, rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made. In the net that they hid has their own foot been caught. The Lord has made himself known, he has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. Higayan Selah. The wicked shall depart to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, do not let mortals prevail. 
Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are only human. Selah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep, on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mark's Gospel and chapter 4 in this section, we see Jesus making a new departure and that he was no longer teaching in a synagogue. He was teaching by the lakeside. He previously made a very orthodox approach to people. Now he began to take unusual methods to continue to share the truth and the love of God. It's important to note that Jesus was quite prepared to use whatever new methods as he was quite willing to take the religious preaching and the teaching out of its conventional setting in a synagogue into the open air. This meant he could speak to crowds of ordinary men and women. But there must have been many Orthodox Jews who regarded this departure as stunting and sensationalism. But Jesus was wise enough to know that when new methods were necessary and adventurous enough, he would be to use them. This new departure needed a new method And with this new method, Jesus had chosen to speak to more people in in parables. Now, a parable is actually something thrown behind something else. That is, it is basically a comparison. It's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus chose it, I think, because it made people listen and was not addressing people in a synagogue where who were more or less bound to stay there to the end of the service. On the contrary, he was dealing with a crowd in the open air who were quite free to challenge him or go away at any time. So uh, the first essential priority was to interest them because otherwise they would just walk away. And the surest way to awaken people's interest and response was to tell them stories as parables in which were hidden truths, and Jesus knew that fully. Furthermore, when Jesus used this way of communicating, he was using something which many of the the Jewish teachers and audiences would have been very familiar, as the Old Testament rabbis used them frequently. I suppose the greatest virtue of a parable is that it urges men and women to try to think what it meant, or it means, for themselves. It can do this because it does not do their thinking for them, but rather helps them to make their own deductions and conclusions for themselves and discover that truth. Jesus was aiming to help folk, including his disciples, to come and to personally discover the impact of that truth for for themselves. He used this form of communication and enlightenment of the truth 
If they made the right effort and the right frame of mind and openness, they could discover for themselves, therefore possess that truth in a way that was real and truly theirs. And in this chapter, Mark shows a number of examples of those proverbs. He used the example of a person sowing seeds. This was something that most of the hearers would have been familiar with because everything in this par parable would be real to its hearers as an everyday detail that came from everyday life. The chapter, in fact, starts with Jesus teaching a large crowd by the side of the Sea of Galilee and relating the parable of a man who went out to sow corn. And as he did so, many of the seeds fell in places where that corn couldn't grow properly. But a smaller amount did grow. He then explains the purpose of the parables and this parable in particular and the meaning of the story of the sower and its relevance to the sowing of God's message. Some of those present had not connected to that aspect and Jesus challenges them by asking, don't you understand this parable of God's love and presence? That the sower in the story sows God's message. But some people are like those seeds that fall on the path or on places where it can cannot continue to grow and neither does their interest and enthusiasm. Other people are like seeds sown in good soil, which grows and flourishes and that represents those who hear the message, accept it and bear the fruit of understanding, the kingdom of God and their part in it. Mark records how Jesus then continued telling a number of additional parables which could enlarge and reveal the understanding of those listening to what it meant to follow and live out those examples of the kingdom of God. But at the end of a long, tiring day, that evening, he suggests to his disciples that they go across to the other side of the lake. Now Jesus was sitting in a boat. He taught the crowd uh, from all day and with the disciples and other accompanying boats, they set out across the lake. Now the Lake of Galilee is notorious for its storms, which often came literally out of the blue, sometimes with shattering and terrifying suddenness. So much so, it was not unusual to see terrible squalls hur hurling themselves even when the sky seemed perfectly clear upon the waters, which are ordinary, very calm. So we read that as the boat set out across the water, Jesus was in the boat and was in a pit position which any distinguished guests would, would be conveyed. This would have been on a seat at the stern of the boat with a small carpet and cushion for extra comfort. Mark recalls that while crossing the water, a great storm of wind got up with massive waves crashing on the boat. They were so heavy that the boat was at the point of being swamped, as were the other boats around it. Jesus, who would probably have been pretty exhausted after a very busy day of dressing and teaching, was fast asleep on a pillow in the rear of the boat. The others in the boat were so frightened that the boat would sink and they would die, woke Jesus and cried out, Don't you care what we're going to die? After Jesus woke up, he said to them, Be quiet and then said to the wind and waves, be still. The storm died down and there was a great calm. And Jesus turns to his disciples and says to them, why are you frightened? Have you still no faith? But we read they were initially terribly afraid and turned to each other saying, who's this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So what can we learn from this story. As we read and think about this story, we do it far less than justice if we merely take it as a literalistic sense. If it describes a miracle in which an actual storm was stilled, it's pretty wonderful, but it's something which happened once and probably would be unlikely to happen again. But if we read it and accept it in a symbolic sense, and relate it to some of the underlying truths which can be found in the many parables which Jesus had just recently used as he taught the crowd, it becomes more understandable and clearer. 
Then once those disciples on the boat, who were terrified of the storm and winds, found an unexpected peace through Jesus' actions, they pondered, who was this that they became stricken with? with? Who can calm the wind and the sea? So what they did, and others down the centuries discovered, was it was to follow and voyage with him as God's son, and it was to find peace even in a storm. And as we follow and obey him by sharing and reflecting his godly love and compassion to others, our journeys often encounter the stormy difficulties of danger, sorrow and pain, as well as satisfaction and joy. And when that happens, he reminds us of his continued presence and guidance through the Holy Spirit and the glory of life to come. He changes the darkness and fear of death into the sunshine and thought of life eternal. This story reminds us that we can find peace and direction when surrounded by life's problems with that stormy tempest of doubt, tension and uncertainty. There will inevitably be times when we do not know what to do, when we stand at some of the crossroads of life and we are still uncertain of which way to take and we can turn to Jesus and persevere and eventually find a way and direction. Verse 11 in Romans 8 reminds us of this Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead and lives within each of us. Just as Christ Jesus rose from the dead, he will give us life to the mortal bodies which we have by the same Spirit living within us. One of my favourite hymns, which I've loved down the years, is Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, and now I'm found, was blind, and now I see. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secure. He will be my shield and portion as long as life endures. I say this in the word of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We say the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life eternal. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayers of intercession will be read by Andrew Clayton. Let's take a moment and uh, quieten our hearts. When I say... Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Church of Christ around the world, in every country, in every province of our Church of England, in every denomination that accepts and acknowledges you as Lord and Saviour. Bless those who minister as priests, as deacons, as lay people. Be present in every meeting of your people around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the outdoors, for the wonder of creation, the opportunity to wander and to look at what you have made. We thank you for the skill that you've given to people who've created the church buildings, the great buildings of our cities, the roads and railways. Be with us and show us how to look after your creation so that we can leave it in a fit state for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the community of Mere Green, 
in and around our own church. Help us to be a shining light, a valid representation of your heavenly kingdom here on earth. And show us how to be your hands and your voice to the people around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for anybody who suffers, whether it be physically or mentally or spiritually. We name before you and in the quietness of our hearts those for whom we have a special interest, including Pete Greenfield, who is on our list of people to be remembered in our services. Bless the sick and heal them. Bring comfort to the dying. Stand with those who mourn. And as we start to come out of this lockdown period, help us to face what may be a third wave of coronavirus in the UK. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the body of Christ, here and in every place. Heavenly Father, teach us how to be good servants to one another. Jesus Christ, show us the way to the heavenly riches you have promised us. Holy Spirit, be with us as we work together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord, which we all seek, will be always with you. We say together, generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, at your table we present these gifts of time, money and faithfulness, symbols of the work you've given us to do. Use them, use us in the service of your world, to the glory of your name. Amen. The Lord is here. God's spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking the bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. 
Lord Jesus, come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be the body and the blood of your Son. And as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with St. James and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory of you are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean and our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Father God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to, pra live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is 10,000 Reasons.
The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending, ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>